Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 7.1. We're going to talk about electron configurations, noble gas configurations, quantum numbers, and magnetism. So let's hop to it. Electron configurations. Now, if you remember from before, this is our 1s2, 2s2, etc. So the first number right here is the rho. So what rho is on with the star, 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 star? It's not really the rho, it's the energy level. Oh, I just wrote energy weather level. Energy level. So D is kind of messed up. Um, the letter is the block, and the superscript tells you the column. So here is the periodic table. This is the S block. Yay! This over here is the P block. This is the D block, and this down here is the F block. This is also S. Okay, um, there are rows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, blah, 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 blah that go through this. Okay, so the letter is the block. The superscript tells you what column it is. So this would be S1, this would be S2, this would be P1, P2, all the way over here, which is P6. Now, this guy right here is S2, helium is S2, so he's weird. Okay, D1 through D10, F1 through F14. Now, we're never going to do the Fs. Okay, um, superscript tells you the column, and that shows you how those column things work, right? When is the number not the row? And the D block and the F block. So what happens is these guys are core electrons. So this tells you the energy level. So normally, as you add electrons, you add them on the outside like layers of clothes. Now, rings are wrong, but this gives you a decent idea. If we think of these as shells, um, which is the word they want us to use, this is the first shell, the second shell, the third shell. Well, I can put things in the th and then I have a fourth shell. Well, I'll put it over here. Fourth shell. So what happens is I fill the 4s, and then what happens is I put some more back in here in the 3d, which is not the outermost shell. So these are core. We'll talk about that more in class. Examples, fluorine. So if I look at fluorine, oh my goodness gracious, I don't have a periodic table on me. That is just so sad. So fluorine is, you should have a periodic table with you. Uh, so periodic table, um, hydrogen to helium, right? That's 1s2. Then I have to look for my periodic table so I can properly say what those elements are. There it is. Um, so that's 1s2. And then I have lithium to beryllium. If you don't have a periodic table out right now, just quit watching the podcast. You're being silly. 2s2. Right? Second row, S block, two of them. Then boron through to fluorine. Doesn't go all the way over there. Still in the second row, P block, and it's 5 over. And there's fluorine. Okay. If I was to do selenium, I need to find selenium. Selenium is number 34. Okay. So I start again. Hydrogen to helium is 1s2. Lithium to beryllium, second row now, s block 2. Now I'm going to go from boron all the way through to neon. Second row, p block. There's six of them this time. Then I'm going to go from sodium to magnesium third row, S block, two. Then I'm going to go, oops, then I'm going to go from aluminum to argon. I almost said Arkansas. That is the third row, P block, and there are six there. Now I've got to go back to the fourth row, potassium to calcium, S block, two. Now remember I said the D block is funny. I want, in my mind, I say that's probably 4D, but it's not. It is 3D. The D block being a core electron actually goes down a level. So instead of being on the outer level or the fourth level, it's a 3D. And so from scandium to zinc, it's 3D10. And then I have back to the 4P, and selenium is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4P4. Okay. Calcium is a little bit shorter than that. It's if you notice calcium is 20, so it won't be as long as this one. So again, starting at the top. First row is 1s2, then 2s2 for lithium to beryllium, then 2p6 for boron to neon, and then 3s2 for sodium to magnesium, 3p6 for aluminum to argon, and then I have just potassium and calcium, which would be 4s2. Okay. Um, vanadium. Vanadium, if you look, is going to end, vanadium is number 23. Vanadium ends in the D block 
and that's the third one. So I know it should end in D3. Okay. As a matter of fact, now it's the top D1, so it's going to be 3D3. So I'm going to keep filling it up, the same thing, until I get to 3D3, and I'll stop there. So if an ADM is 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, and do you see how that coordinate system kind of helped me get there? Okay. Magnetism. Elements with unpaired electrons are paramagnetic. All paired electrons are diamagnetic. And I put this slide in the wrong spot. It should have gone after this one. Boxes are orbitals. Orbitals hold it in those two electrons. So we're going to show this in the box notation. Atoms are lowest energy when a block is full. Lowest energy would be most stable. Atoms are pretty stable when a block is half full. The rest is junk and has no special non-set of powers stability. Everything else is pretty much unstable. So again, to go back to this, elements with unpaired electrons are called paramagnetic. Paired electrons are called diamagnetic, and you need to know those. So let's take a look at the orbital notations of nitrogen. So nitrogen starts with 1s, and we know it's 1s2, so I'll put a box here, and I draw an up arrow and a down arrow because the electrons have opposing spins so that they will not create a magnetic field. Then it's 2s, up arrow, down arrow, I think nitrogen is, um, then I count nitrogen over, and nitrogen is 2p. Now remember, the p block holds six electrons, and if each box holds two, then these would be up, up, up. A very frequent and current way of showing this is 2p, and this would be x, y, and z. So you can even label these as, whoa, I threw my pen, 2px, 2py, and 2pz. And this would have three single electrons, so it would be, what was that again? Hmm, what was it? If I have single electrons, it would be unpaired electrons, would be paramagnetic. Okay? Magnesium. Magnesium is number 12. So its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. So if I'm going to show the um, orbital diagram for this, it would be the same thing as this 1s, 2s. 2px, 2p, whoops, y, 2pz, and then 3s, and that's it. So boxy, 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 boxy. Why am I saying boxy? And then up, down, the first two go in the lowest energy, which is 1s. <laughs> oh, I did that wrong. Oh, no. Now we get to Hun's rule. And I forgot to explain Hun's rule. Hun's rule, and this is a good example of Hund's rule, every orbital of equal energy gets one electron before any get two electrons. And that's the number one, not a capital I. Okay? So here, Px gets one, Py gets one, Pz gets one. Now we start filling in the twos. And 3s is up, down. Okay? Now I could do vanadium, but let's face it, I don't want to. Oh, I guess I will. I'll just say it's the same thing as this, 3s, and then I'll continue. So ditto marks. So then I'll do 3p, 3px, 3py, 3pz, because vanadium, again, is going to end in 3d2. And then I need a boxy, 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 boxy. So up, 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 down, down, down. Then I have 4s, which doesn't have any other little designation with it. Now 3d, there are 10 boxes in vanadium, right? It's 10 boxes in the d block. So I need to draw them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I just lied to you. I said 10 boxes. There are 10 electrons. 10 electrons. But there are five boxes. And they don't have all those. They do have little designations like X, Y, and Z. But they're so such a pain that we don't deal with them. So if I have three, I'd go up, up, up. There's the orbital diagram. And again, it would be paramagnetic. So why are noble gases unreactive? The orbital diagram of argon, which I hope is just 2p6, because I hope argon's that first one. No, of course. Argon, I'll do the 
outer part. We'll say neon is the core, and then we'll say 3s, and then 3p, and this will represent argon. Putting that box in there means, look at all those guys in there. Up, down, up, 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 down, down, down. So why are noble gases unreactive? Question mark. Because they are full. And that makes them lower energy. All right. Noble gas notation. So noble gas notation is nice because you get to cheat a little bit. So and I kind of did it on the other one. If I'm looking at bromine, bromine is number 35. I don't want to write 35 electrons. I want to write less than that. So what I'm going to do is look at the preceding noble gas. Preceding noble gas is argon. That takes care of 18 of them. So then I'm going to deal with 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I have to deal with 4s2. By the way, um, bromine ends in 1, 2, 3, 4. Bromine ends in the fourth row, P block, fifth electron. Fourth row, P block, fifth electron. So I'm going to go up to 4p5. So 4s2. After 4s2 comes 3d10, and then 4p5, and I can't make a zero to save my soul today. There you go. Silver. Okay, silver is one of the awful exceptions that we'll deal with. So silver has krypton as its preceding noble gas, and then it is in row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5s2 is my first thought, and then silver is 4d9. Now here's a little sad note thing. Wah, 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 wah. There is not d4 and d9 equal d don't. Oh, okay. Now why? If I have 5s wah, wah, and 4d, five boxes. One, two, three, four, five. Up, down, up, 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 down, 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 down. Remember when we talked about having full stability? This has full stability. Woohoo! This one, uh, unfull stability. So what happens here is one of these little 5S guys jumps up here, da, 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 and this has half-filled stability, which is pretty good. And this now has full stability, which is really good. So it promotes so that I went from having full stability and nothing to half-filled stability and full stability. So it promotes. So you will never have D4 or D9. You'll have S1, D10. Promethium. Why did I put promethium on there just to torture you? And to make this take forever, let's see if I can find promethium, which is number 61. I'm not going to do that. 61. We will not do F blocks because it's dropped from the curriculum. Yay! That should make you happy. Valence electrons are lost during ion formation. S and P are the only valence electrons. Okay, So they're the outer ones. Now, if you remember, that's because D and F have, whoa, I put four. D and F have lower um, energy levels. So remember when I talked about um, the energy levels for it? This is bumped up one. F is actually bumped up two. Wow. D blocks Luther S first and then D only if necessary. So remember when I had 5S1, 4D10 for silver? Um, AG positive is, oh, what was that preceding noble gas? Shucks. Argon in brackets, and then just 4d10, and that is Ag positive. Calcium's in the second column. It has two valence electrons. Chromium has one, and antimony has five, and I'm afraid I won't be able to project. Oh, good! Review slide, because my computer's crashing. Electron configurations are long. Noble gas configurations are short. D4, D9, D don't. Orbital diagrams, boxes hold two. SPDF have how many orbitals? So this, remember, it is orbitals or boxes. One, three, five, seven. Quantum number solved for a complex equation that describe where electrons probably are, and they're not in this anymore. So I will say this to you. Toodles.